They are women, and they are killers. When I shot again, the bullet entered his chest. They have been sentenced to die. I'm not worried about it. If it happens, it happens. I'm going to fight kicking and screaming all the way to literature. They are mothers and grandmothers. Last time I seen my children grow up, they were four and five years old. But few women are ever put to death. Justice hasn't been served. She's still alive. It's a hot summer day in Wetumpka, Alabama. Linda Lyon sits on her patio. As she's done nearly every day since 1994, she reads her morning paper. I had always considered myself a lady, someone who cared deeply about her country, her family, her church, and then being thrown in the bowels of hell only someone who's been there can really understand what it's like. Life on death row is not life. It's existence. Linda Lyon began her descent to death row on October 4th, 1993. An unseasonably warm day in the small town of Opelika, Alabama. On that calm fall day, Linda Lyon, her nine-year-old son, and her common-law husband, George Sibley, were passing through the town in their maroon Mustang. Lyon and Sibley were fugitives, on the run from authorities in their hometown of Orlando, Florida, where they had failed to appear for sentencing on an assault charge. They were also members of an anti-government fringe group called the Patriots. They didn't carry driver's licenses. They didn't pay their taxes. They did carry weapons and were ready to use them at the slightest provocation. George Sibley pulled the car into a crowded shopping center parking lot. Linda Lyon got out to make a phone call while Sibley stayed in the car with the young boy. 38-year-old Roger Motley, a veteran of the Opelika Police Department, was picking up some office supplies in the same shopping center. As he came out of the store, he was approached by a citizen. She had observed a child in a vehicle uh, that was, she thought needed some help. Moments later, Sergeant Motley spotted the maroon car and went to investigate. He began to question George Sibley. The officer requested to see Sibley's driver's license. Sibley told the officer he didn't have one. Then, Sergeant Motley ordered Sibley to put his hands on the car. Sibley refused. Then he just said, step away from the car. He just asked me, do you have a problem with that? And I said, yes. And that's as far as I got. He put his hand on his gun. I considered it a very grave threat to myself. So I reached for my gun. And we had a gunfight start. Linda Lyon was on a payphone 50 yards away. I didn't see any of this, but I heard the popping noises. I said, oh, God, no. And I dropped the phone, and I just ran. It just took me a moment to realize that there was a gun battle going on here, and, and I just automatically drew my own weapon, which I carried behind me, back in, in my pants, and I shot the officer. Witnesses would later say that Lyon was in a crouched firing position, as if she were a professional marksman. When he realized that I was shooting at him, he turned toward me with his gun in his hand, pointed right at me, and I was just, I just knew I was going to be hit. And it was at that time that, that when I shot again, that a bullet entered his chest. As the officer got into his squad car and drove away, Lyon fired her gun another time. Sergeant Motley radioed the police department, a double zero, officer in trouble. Double zero, double zero. Double corners, double zero. Shots fired in the parking lot. Shots fired in the parking lot. Roger Motley had been shot at least five times. As Linda Lyon and George Sibley made their getaway, Sergeant Motley was rushed to the hospital. Around that same time, there was a knock at the door of the police officer's mother. I go to the door and it's two friends. We sat down and they told me that my son had been shot several times. 
and was in the emergency room. So I had gone to um, dress to get to the hospital, and the lady comes to the door and tells me, and it's too late, uh, Roger's gone. Cops were now in hot pursuit of the suspects. We didn't know the area. We just kept going up and down roads trying to find a way out. We ended up at a roadblock. There must have been at least 20 cars. When we saw the roadblock, it was like, well, you know, it's all over. At the roadblock, Lyon and Sibley told authorities they would not be taken alive. Afraid that her nine-year-old son might get caught in the crossfire, Lyon quickly released the young boy into police custody. And I remember telling him to be a good boy, that they would take care of him. And I remember just sitting there holding his face in my hands. I might never see him again. But I kissed him goodbye and walked him walk away. That was the hardest thing I ever did. So let my son go. Linda Lyon and George Sibley debated whether to kill themselves. We wanted just to go ahead and, and end it all then. But it was thinking of my son that made us decide to surrender and fight. He's out. He's out. He's out. Four hours later, Lyon and Sibley gave themselves up. Inside the Mustang, police found an arsenal of weapons, rifles, knives, pistols, and more than a thousand rounds of ammunition. Linda Lyon and her husband were arrested and charged with capital murder. First, George Sibley was found guilty and sent to Alabama's death row. Then, one year after the shooting, Linda Lyon went on trial for murder. Against the advice of the judge and attorneys, she chose to represent herself. The prosecution told the jury that Lyon had no remorse for taking Sergeant Motley's life. She agrees. I'm not sorry. I don't regret it. I do regret that I had to take a life. And that bothers me a lot. But I don't regret that I defended my husband. And I never could understand why Suddenly, the law says that simply because I shoot a police officer without considering the circumstances that led to it could land me on death row. She came up behind him, knelt down in a firing position with her semi-automatic and opened fire from 15 feet. And that's what I call a cold-blooded killer. I was hoping that the jury could really reason out and bring justice and find her guilty so that she would be sentenced to the electric chair. And I even prayed for it. After a trial that lasted only four days, Linda Lyon was convicted of capital murder. The jury would then be given the option of sentencing Lyon either to life in prison without parole or death in Alabama's infamous electric chair, nicknamed Yellow Mama. A jury deliberated the fate of Linda Lyon for less than one hour. She'd already been found guilty of killing a police officer. Jurors decided that Lyon should be put to death in Alabama's electric chair. They just told me that the state of Alabama wants to put me to death in the most horrible manner. Me, a woman, a mother, a businesswoman. And the only thing that I did was protect my husband. And I said to myself, what has happened to our judicial system when this can happen to someone like me? <sighs> In December 1994, Linda Lyon was sent here to the Julia Tutwiler prison in Wetumpka, Alabama. 
The maximum security prison is home to the state's only death row for women. Even on death row, Linda Lyon maintains that when she shot and killed a cop, she was only trying to prevent the police officer from killing her husband. Here I am. And no, I don't regret it. I don't regret saving my husband's life, even though doing so has risked mine. Now they may execute me. But up until the moment they do, if that does happen, I know I did the right thing. And I do not regret that. As a death row inmate, Lyon is forced to wear handcuffs and chains on her legs when she is moved from her death row cell. Monitored at all times by corrections officers and segregated from the general prison population allowed only to interact with the other women on death row. There were times that I thought it would have been better for me to die than to endure what I've already endured just to sit there on death row and endure all the abuse and harassment and the noise and the filth of a lifestyle that is so totally alien to me that I felt like then I walked into an alien world. All the same, Linda Lyon's death row cell opens up onto a patio where she can plant vegetables, hang laundry, exercise, or read. To be able to see birds and see trees and grass helps. It helps me escape mentally from the confinement of prison. I read the Wall Street Journal every day and I listen to the news stations. I keep in touch with the world. I remember that the world is still out there and I'm not out of it yet. Linda Lyon, who grew up in a well-to-do family in Orlando, Florida, is different from most of the nation's death row women. She is not poor, she's not a victim of domestic violence and she is educated. But like most of the women on death row, Lion is a mother. I worry about my son. How am I going to prepare him for life? Of being the son of the, of the woman who was sentenced to death for killing a cop. In 1998, Lion was one of three women on death row in Alabama. One of 48 in the United States. Her common-law husband, George Sibley, is among the more 3,400 men around the country awaiting execution. Though in 1998, women committed roughly one out of eight crimes that could land them on death row, they received just one out of 50 death sentences. My research is that there is a gender bias here. Men suffer from it. Men get sentenced to death in part and executed in part because they happen to be men and not women. Linda Lyon and the other woman on Alabama's death row are afforded luxuries that their male counterparts are not. The men are confined to their cells 23 hours a day. Allowed out for only 45 minutes of exercise. Though they are not allowed to see each other, Lyon and her husband George Sibley correspond from their death row cells 128 miles apart. I used to wake up and just think, yes, this is real, I'm still here. Both of us went into this uh, convinced that we couldn't even survive it, but we learned very quickly that we could. For Linda Lyon, Survival means scouring law books every day, looking for something that might help her and her husband overturn their convictions and death sentences. The couple is pursuing their appeals on their own. They have no interest in prolonging the appeals process or their stay on death row. It's not a matter of a death wish. I want my justice and I want it swiftly. And if I'm willing to take that chance, why not?
If Linda Lyon does not win her appeal, she might eventually be executed in Alabama's Yellow Mama. The last time a woman sat in this chair was in 1957. Here in Alabama, they shave your head so that they can attach electrodes to bare skin. They shove cotton up your rectum. They put a diaper on you because when the electricity goes through you, your bowels and your and your bladder evacuates. And when they strap you in, they put a hood over your face because when the electricity goes through you, your face contorts and your eyeballs explode. It's a horrible way to die. And as much as I am not at all looking forward to dying in that manner, neither am I interested in sitting for years on death row, rotting in hell which is the way I feel like I'm doing right now. I'll live to see her executed because uh, they have passed a law in Alabama now that uh, two members of the immediate family can be at the execution. And uh, since I'm his mother, and I'm still his mother, even though he isn't here, I'm going to be one of those members. I'm going to see her die. And I won't, I won't regret it, because she deserves it. No, I don't deserve to die, and I'm going to fight kicking and screaming all the way to the lecture chair if they still put me there. They'll have to drag me, because I'm going to resist down to the last moment. Although Lion will fight, she says she is not afraid to die. I'm ready to meet God. I'm not afraid of meeting God. Linda Lyon is led back to Alabama's death row. Back to the cell block where she and one other woman sit and wait. I've always lived my life to the fullest. I've loved, I've had children. I've had great adventures. I've sat down and had dinner with governors and senators and actors. Not a lot of people in my life. I've had a full life. And I don't intend to spend the rest of my life sitting in a box. like a police department was picking up some office supplies in the same shopping center. As he came out of the store, he was approached by a citizen. She had observed a child in a vehicle uh, that was, she thought needed some help. Moments later, Sergeant Motley spotted the maroon car and went to investigate. He began to question George Sibley. The officer requested to see Sibley's driver's license. Sibley told the officer he didn't have one. Then, Sergeant Motley ordered Sibley to put his hands on the car. Sibley refused. Then he just said, step away from the car. He just asked me, do you have a problem with that? And I said, yes. Women are ever put to death. Justice hasn't been served. She's still alive. It's a hot summer day in Wetumpka, Alabama. Linda Lyon sits on her patio. As she's done nearly every day since 1994, she reads her morning paper. I had always considered myself a lady, someone who cared deeply about her country, her family, her church, and then being thrown in the bowels of hell only someone who's been there can really understand what it's like. Life on death row is not life. It's existence. Linda Lyon began her descent to death row on October 4th, 1993. An unseasonably warm day in the small town of Opelika, Alabama. 
On that calm fall day, Linda Lyon, her nine-year-old son. They are women, and they are killers. When I shot again, a bullet entered his chest. They have been sentenced to die. I'm not worried about it. If it happens, it happens. I'm going to fight kicking and screaming all the way to literature. They are mothers and grandmothers. Last time I seen my children grow up, they were four and five years old. But few and her common-law husband, George Sibley, were passing through the town in their maroon Mustang. Lyon and Sibley were fugitives, on the run from authorities in their hometown of Orlando, Florida, where they had failed to appear for sentencing on an assault charge. They were also members of an anti-government fringe group called the Patriots. They didn't carry driver's licenses. They didn't pay their taxes. They did carry weapons and were ready to use them at the slightest provocation. George Sibley pulled the car into a crowded shopping center parking lot. Linda Lyon got out to make a phone call while Sibley stayed in the car with the young boy. 38-year-old Roger Motley, a veteran of the 